Hey guys and welcome back to the channel with another awesome MTG lore video. Today the channel will be going old school, like real old school, like legacy old school. But not the format. Come on, really, this is a lore channel first and foremost. No, I'm talking about the OG legacy. The Legacy Weapon, a powerful series of artifacts built by Urza to kill a godly cloud of death and metal known as Yawgmoth. Look, if you're new to magic, that probably made zero sense, but believe me, the story is actually pretty good. So, let's begin. First, let's go into what exactly the Legacy Weapon is. Well, it's not so much an artifact as people may think, but rather it's an idea given material presence. Urza really dislikes the Phyrexians, and I mean, who doesn't, right? They're cold and creepy. Urza, a powerful artificer and planeswalker, foresaw the Phyrexians, led by a being known as Yawgmoth, eventually invading his home plane of Dominaria, and Urza sought to stop that. The very idea of defeating the Phyrexians was built and shaped into the Legacy Weapon, which was fueled by other artifacts collected by Urza and the Weatherlight crew over the course of their journey. As I said, the Legacy Weapon isn't just this one thing, even the items used in its powering took the idea Urza had and conformed to it. This was truly a belief, given form by the best artificer the multiverse had ever seen. In that, the weapon that would eventually bring down Yawgmoth and Phyrexians, for a little bit anyway, included a grocery list of other artifacts. Get ready, cause there's a lot of them. The Null Rod, built and designed to deactivate artificial constructs such as Phyrexian War Machines. The Thran Engine or Turbine, meant to be the engine of the Legacy Weapon. The Thran were a race of exceedingly intelligent and crafty humanoids on Dominaria long ago, and while their constructs held many mysteries, their power was pretty much undeniable. Another gift from the Thrain were the Mightstone and Weakstone, two halves of a Power Stone that the Thrain used to close off a portal to Phyrexia. These gems were fused into Urza's bean, having been set into his very eyes and giving him immense magical prowess. There's also Squeeze Toy, which was, as you could probably guess, more than just a squeeze ball. Squee was the goblin cabin boy for the Weatherlight, and his quote-unquote toy was actually a device known as the Salvation Sphere. It pretty much prevented harm from coming to those who held it, which Squee would come to cherish. The Juju Bubble, how this awful thing was needed for the legacy weapon we can only imagine, but in the lore there isn't much there. Just that it can maybe reveal what's inside someone's heart? I don't know, it's, it's trash. The Chimeric Sphere, which is a device designed to take the form of a living thing, it was meant to adhere to whatever shape the legacy weapon needed to be used against Yawgmoth. Gerard's Hourglass Pendant, which isn't mentioned very often, but Gerard felt it was really important to keep it from the hands of the enemy, and it was somehow tied to himself as a character. Little else is known about it, however. The Touchstone, a magical gem which turned artifacts into obedient servants, even being used against Karn the Silver Golem, to make him nothing more than a statue for a time. The Mind Stone, used to store thoughts and information, it could be used to influence minds and share knowledge. The Sky Shaper, an artifact that could grant the ability to fly to anyone who controlled it, it's what they used to make the Weatherlight fly through portals and travel to other planes. The Thrain Forge, which when used, turned organic material into inorganic artifacts and granted them superior strength. A boon to the Weatherlight crew who used it on an elemental that was looking to take down their ship. The Thrain Tome, which was a written account of all the former Thrain civilizations and artificial achievements. Urza used this as the blueprint for many of his artifacts, including many found within the Legacy and the Weatherlight Skyship itself. Karn eventually absorbed all this knowledge within himself. The Bones of Ramos, the remains of an ancient and powerful artificial dragon who sacrificed itself to save beings from Dominaria back when the plane was all Explodian stuff. Ramos carried them as an interplanar ship to Mercadia, but crashed and died in the process. Now its remains power the legacy, including its eyes, heart, horn, skull, and tooth. Karn the Silver Golem, a non-living but very human-esque construct crafted and given emotions by Urza. Originally designed to withstand time experiments and portal travel, Karn would eventually be tasked with protecting Gerard Capuchin, and would come to be the most important aspect of the legacy weapon. The Power Matrix, a powerful device that granted the Skyship Weatherlight the power to shift between planes as if it were planeswalking, 
Gerard Capuchin himself, a brave and noble leader whose biology was carefully designed by Urza over a generation to make the perfect example of a human and their capabilities. He would come to join the Weatherlight crew and give up his very soul to save all of Dominaria. And finally, the Skyship Weatherlight, a device designed to hunt down and incorporate the different vessels of the legacy weapon. At the end of the day, the ship itself would be used as the weapon that brought down Yawgmoth. With these artifacts combined, Urza and his crew fired the legacy weapon, weaponized concentration of white mana at Yawgmoth, greatly injuring him and forcing him to end his invasion of Dominaria. In firing the legacy weapon, however, many lives were lost. The soul of Gerard Capuchin and the eyes of Urza were sacrificed in the weapon's use, with all its power and all the legacy artifacts passing through Karn, the Silver Golem. As the catalyst, Karn absorbed all this power, the soul of Gerard, the spark of Urza, making him the first artificial planeswalker. With all the knowledge of those lost and the powers of the artifacts used, Karn would be a living reminder of Urza and the feat they accomplished together. And that you guys are all of the artifacts that made up the legacy weapon. Which one was your favorite back in the day? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave it a like, share it with friends, and of course subscribe for more awesome content in the future. Remember guys, this and all my videos for the remainder of December are a part of my 12 Cards of Christmas series. That means the Etherhub community is out collecting charitable contributions to help find a cure for arthritis by supporting the Arthritis National Research Foundation. I'm calling on you, Vorthos and MTG fans out there to give what you can, and earn some awesome MTG products at the same time. That's right, I've partnered with ABU Games to offer everyone who donates to this cause a chance at winning booster packs, singles from my personal collection, MTG accessories, and even an entire box of Iconic Masters and Unstable. If you want to know more about what you can win by giving this holiday season, please visit our GoFundMe page linked in the description below. All donations provided go directly to the Arthritis National Research Foundation. We are trying to hit our goal of 5,000 donated in just December, so get the word out for this awesome cause. Can't support the charity financially? That's okay. Also linked below is our social media Gleam campaign. Spread the word of this charity drive and you'll be entered to win just as much awesome MTG swag. And as a bonus, all those who like, share, and comment on this video will also be entered in its own self-contained giveaway. I'm basically giving away everything I stockpiled over the past year, so take advantage of it. Donate to a great cause, spread the word, and take my stuff. As always guys, and especially for this time of year, I just want to say thank you for being an amazing community. The Etherhub community is, without a doubt, one of the best out there on YouTube. Keep on being amazing. Thank you all for watching, and with much love this holiday season, I'm Sybin, and I'll see you next time.